Hi there, my name is Eddie Caudill, and I'm in the chapel at Queen of Peace, and want to talk to you a little bit about Eucharistic adoration. Some people would have some questions about Eucharistic adoration. What is it, what does it mean? What kind of uh, prayer are we talking about when we, when we talk about going to the chapel for adoration? First of all, I would like to say that it flows from the Mass because the Mass, the Eucharist, is the center and summit of our liturgy in the church. Everything flows from the Mass on Sunday. And then, of course, we can have Mass during the week as well. But there are times when we're not celebrating the Mass, but we can come to the church and be in the presence of the Lord for prayer. So how does this happen? We know that Christ is present when we all gather together for Mass. Christ is present in the people assembled, but Christ is also present in the word proclaimed. So in another very special way, Christ is present in the Mass when the word, especially the gospel, is proclaimed and we hear it. But also, Christ is very present in a very real and special way in the Eucharist. And that is during the Mass when the priest celebrant raises the bread and the wine, the elements, you might say, then they become the body of Christ. And we take Christ's words very literally in the Catholic Church, and we have since the beginning. But a lot of people have a problem understanding this or believing this. But we believe that Christ is truly present in the Eucharist. And one of the things that we've been doing since the early church times is at Mass, reserving some of the consecrated bread, which we call the Blessed Sacrament, in a tabernacle, in a sacred space, so that the Eucharist can be taken to our members who are sick or dying. And so in every Catholic church, and in some Blessed Sacrament chapels like this one, you will see a tabernacle where a red light is lit, and this signifies that the Blessed Sacrament is kept there. So we have a special reverence for that space because Christ is present. And we know that Christ is present in all the tabernacles throughout the world. So at any given moment, somewhere in the world, somebody is praying before the Blessed Sacrament. And so this is another way in adoration that we join together with the whole church. So here at Queen of Peace, when we have adoration in the chapel, for example, and people come here at different times to kneel down before the Blessed Sacrament and perhaps sit in the chair, but focus on the real presence of Christ in the exposed sacrament, which is on the altar in a monstrance. And this is a chance for us to actually, with our eyes, be in the presence of the Lord and see the Blessed Sacrament. And some people, even from the beginning, have had a hard time with this. And some of Jesus' followers actually left the community because they could not take this and believe it. But the church has carried on trusting and believing that Jesus is truly present. And we take him at his word when he said, this is my body, which is given up for you. And so this is a mystery because when we look at this bread, it still looks like bread. But we know from Eucharistic miracles that have taken place at times that sometimes Jesus actually does allow us to see what appears to be his flesh even dripping with blood. An interesting fact about that is it's been determined throughout history that Jesus' blood type is AB which is interesting. And Ethan will probably cut this out because I'm getting off track. But more about that later, perhaps at one of my WCFF classes. So the thing is, it's a real mercy that the Lord allows the bread and the wine to keep what we call its accidents. It still looks like bread. It still looks like wine. It tastes like wine because some of us would probably freak out if 
we were drinking what really appeared to be Jesus' blood and his flesh. So God is looking out for us in that respect as well. But we come to the chapel for adoration, let's say. Now this is a word that we reserve for worshiping God. We adore Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. This is a word we don't use any other time. We do not say, oh, I adore the Blessed Virgin Mary. We do not adore statues. We venerate the Blessed Virgin Mary. We venerate the Word of God, but we worship Jesus. We worship God. We adore Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. So keep in mind that these specific words help us understand that we are truly kneeling before our God. And so at a time when you can come for adoration and recognize the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist, this is a time where you can open up and have a special time of prayer with Jesus where you're talking to the Lord, you're revealing your inmost self to your Lord, and you're allowing your God to see inside of you and minister to you in a special way that perhaps is more intense because of our physical um, senses that allow us to experience a very powerful time of prayer in adoration in the chapel. Uh, perhaps when you're outside and you, you see God's handiwork in nature, you might have a special experience there too because of what you see and feel. How much more do you think you could feel the presence of Jesus and know that Jesus is close to you at a time of adoration when you look at Jesus and the Blessed Sacrament? So while I'm having a time of prayer before the Blessed Sacrament, there's a couple of things that come to my mind that I'd like to share with you. One is, I remember a time when I was in adoration in the chapel and I was all alone and I was kneeling and it wasn't a very comfortable position for me. And I thought, oh, do I want to kneel this whole time? I think I might have been praying uh, the rosary and I was trying to get through that but I was very uncomfortable. And I looked upon the crucifix there, and I thought, oh, well, look what Jesus went through for me. I think I can stay on my knees. Well, that was a discipline I imposed on myself. Um, I'm not sure that that meant that um, I was any more devoted than anybody else. But since then, I have learned that if my knees are bothering me, I don't have to kneel down to be able to pray and to know that I'm in the presence of the Lord. But it's a sign of respect, perhaps, or even a sign of penitence if you come into the chapel and you want to talk to the Lord about examining your conscience. And I find the best time for me, anyway, to do an examination of conscience is before the Blessed Sacrament. Now, I know we have all kinds of little pamphlets and things that help us, or maybe even the Ten Commandments or the Beatitudes to help us with our examination of conscience. But I find that when I kneel before Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament and say, Lord, show me the things in my life that I need to deal with, I find that that's the best time that I can honestly be open to Jesus and he shows me the areas of my life that I need to bring to confession. So it is also linked to that sacrament when we're preparing to meet Jesus in confession. Another thing is I like to pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet when I go to adoration. And here's a picture of, that we're all familiar with, the Divine Mercy. It says, Jesus, I trust in you. And I think of Sister Kowalska who Jesus appeared to and gave her this image. And I thought, wow, wouldn't that be something, you know, if Jesus appeared to me that way. But then I think, Jesus appears to me. I'm in the presence of the Lord every time I go to adoration. And 
I love the prayers of the Divine Mercy Chaplet because they are such words of worship and acknowledging God. And so, for example, Almighty Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. And that's a beautiful prayer to say before the Blessed Sacrament. And another thing that we can do is bring other devotional materials or prayer books with us. And I always like to start my holy hour in front of the Blessed Sacrament with an act of spiritual communion. Because when we go to Mass, perhaps we're able to receive Holy Communion. And, you know, because Jesus said, take this, all of you, and eat it. Well, when we come to adoration, it's not appropriate then for us to receive communion. And, but we make an act of spiritual communion, which unites us with all of our brothers and sisters in the whole world in the body of Christ. And so an act of spiritual communion helps me to focus on the presence of Christ in the Blessed Sacrament. And I have a prayer book here. This, is, this one is called A Prayer Book for Eucharistic Adoration. And there's different prayer books that you can use. And perhaps you want to use some of the prayers in those prayer books like a novena or daily prayer, a noon prayer. You know, there are prayers appropriate for the time of day. But you get into... Um, uh, sort of a devotion that you like to bring before the Blessed Sacrament and offer that time for a holy hour for yourself. So I would encourage you to look into Eucharistic adoration and see if that's something that would really enhance your devotional life and uh, your prayer life. Thank you very much. God bless. Hello, I'm Lori Martino, Youth Ministry Coordinator. Um, and I'm here to talk to you also about Eucharistic adoration. Like Eddie said, it is worshiping the Eucharist outside of Mass, um, adoring the Blessed Sacrament, the presence of Jesus. And I feel like really that's all that needs to be said. So I'm just going to give you um, a little bit more of logistics on what that looks like specifically here at Queen of Peace. Um, so Eucharistic adoration happens every Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Um, right here in the chapel. Uh, people have um, dedicated themselves to come and to adore for an hour, um, but don't be intimidated by that. If you know a teen that's going through the confirmation program, they've done this a couple times, so you can chat with them, an hour is nothing. Uh, however, you don't have to come for an hour. You can come for as little or as long as you want. Uh, I have a quote from a saint, St. Alphonsus Liguori, and he says, Know also that you will probably gain more by praying 15 minutes before the Blessed Sacrament than by all the other spiritual exercises of the day. So 15 tiny little measly minutes in front of Jesus. Um, boom, that's, that's, that's your day right there. Um, there is a code on the chapel doors. All you have to do is contact the office um, and we'll be happy to um, get you the code. Uh, you'll walk in through the doors and immediately, here's another boom, Jesus will be right here on the altar in the monstrance. And it's just the first thing you see when you walk in. Um, Eddie mentioned kneeling. There's usually a kneeler right here. Uh, and I love to just come up and kneel. You're like a, a foot from Jesus. And you could just look at him and he looks at you and it's just um, this very magnifying thing. Um, and then you may sit anywhere in the chapel. There's chairs all around. There's kneelers. There's plenty of social distancing space. Everybody's masked. Um, it's a, it's a, a safe place to be. Um, what do you do? Whatever you want. It's your quiet, intimate time with Jesus. Um, for me, it is the one place where nobody else can get at me. So I've, I'm not doing dishes, I'm not getting texts, um, I'm not doing confirmation stuff. This is just for me and um, for Jesus to get at me. So can you pray the rosary? Absolutely. Um, uh, Queen of Peace will be starting a novena. This could be on that day you could pray your novena here with Jesus. Um, you could just sit in silence and look at him and let him look at you um, and tell you what he wants to tell you um, and all the amazing things that he feels about you. 
Um, you could read the Bible. You could read, get ready for the upcoming readings at Mass, do a little bit of um, exploration with that, maybe some Lexio Divina, maybe spend a little bit more time with the gospel that you heard um, from the previous couple days Mass. Um, really, whatever you want to do to get close to Jesus. Um, this is a great thing to start, um, especially in this season of Lent, or come back if you haven't been for a while. Uh, and it's one of those things that can continue for the rest of your life. Um, and I do have another quote um, by St. Teresa of Calcutta, good old Mother Teresa. The time you spend with Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament is the best time that you will spend on earth. Each moment that you spend with Jesus will deepen your union with him and make your soul everlastingly more glorious and beautiful in heaven and will help bring about an everlasting peace on earth. So it's good for you here and it's good for you there. See you soon in adoration.